Alright, let's carry on and get this done with. Yep. It does. It means you, your primal instincts, lust and pornography and fornication, adultery, all just primal instincts. That's all. You're just an all? animal. The Bible demands moral accountability and says those things are wrong. Oh. And that's why it's not acceptable to you. That's why you're not seeking after truth. Am I wrong? Yes. <laughs> Have you been Am right? I, wrong? <laughs> I think you're wrong. So far, I say that you know intuitively. Except his name. The creation is proof of the creator. God has given you that inner light. So when you look at the Hold genius on, of God's creation... Hold on, can I just stop there? Right, just, just a little. I know this is really nitpicking, but how do you know it's a creation? You're playing word games, way. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's not a creation. If a creation is defined as something that has a creator, then you have to prove that it has a creator in order to know that it is a creation. Yeah, he's defining his God into existence. Yeah, exactly. It of hand, you know he exists because of creation. You are a unique human being, made in the image of God with a sense of justice and truth and oh, righteousness. So we're God gave you a omnipresent. Cool. I didn't know that. It's, it's inherent and shaped by society, but it's inherent. You know right from wrong. You've violated his law, and I don't want you to end up in hell. James, if you put your finger on it and see if we can, your struggle at the moment is because of your love of sin because of the pleasure oh, that sin gives you and you don't want to give it up. You're like a man with a, a money belt filled with gold who's just fallen into the ocean right. and saying... You are south of the rake, Ray. No, you can't just say all the problems in the world are because we don't believe in the pedo in the sky. It isn't because of that. It's because of the fucking human condition. It's because our brains are hardwired for aggression, violence, and the most fucking depraved shit. And yet... The paradox, the fucking other end of that spectrum. Our brains are made so that we can ignore that shit. We can rise above it. We can do a better job. But for you to sit there and say, It's because you love sin and I love you. Please don't sin. Go shove a fucking cactus in you. You fucking twisted little imp of a man. You don't so when do we arrive to the uh, blue pounds part pounds is going to take you under. It doesn't matter how much pleasure it gives you, it's not worth losing your life for. Gail, you're not a beast. You're a human being created by God in His image with dignity and worth and purpose. And yeah, do you know what God did for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Any idea? Mm -mm. Sacrifice himself to no. himself? Well, God became a human being 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Nazareth, and He suffered and died on a cross taking the punishment for the sin of the world. You and I violated he God's law just and Jesus paid our fine. That means God can, means God can it, legally dismiss no, our case why, why, that because of the suffering, death sense. and resurrection of the Savior. God can say you're out of here because someone paid your fine. And then Which what is God immoral. can now do is clothe us in the righteousness of Christ. So on Judgment Day, you're saved from God's wrath and His justice because of the death can and I resurrection of the Savior. If you repent and trust in Him... A flaw that I've noticed in the story of how Jesus sacrificed Himself Jesus underwent a bit of torture, and when I say a bit, I do realize that according to the book, he was whipped for a while, which to me sounds a bit kinky. He had some thorns stuck in his head, and he got nailed onto a plank of wood. Can I just point out, he suffered for a few days, and was granted everlasting life beside his father, who's also himself, and it's kind of complicated. But... He was granted everlasting life in bliss, being waited on hand and foot by everyone who believes in him. That is not a sacrifice, that's a down payment. Yeah. Exactly, and you know what, you know what, if that was the punishment, you know, I'd be like, okay, that's terrible, but at the end of the day, it's not as bad as what the actual sacrifice, as what the actual punishment is, which is, you know, an eternity in the hell. Okay, shall we carry kind of on? Kind of doesn't sound like he's paying everyone's fine there. It kind of sounds like a cop-out. <laughs> kind of? Yeah. God will give you a righteous standing in his eyes. He'll wash away your sins in an instant. And he'll grant you the gift of everlasting life. His last words on the cross were, It is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. He came to take our punishment upon himself. So because our fine was paid by another, God can legally dismiss your case. It's very hard to believe that Prove someone it. would be willing to pay off 
the depths that lies on. As in, yeah, the Bible says God is love. Yes. You know, and He's kind and generous and it, and, and if you don't and accept them, you'll it, burn in hell. Yeah, forever. and it doesn't matter if you can't show that it's true, you moron. And in His great kindness, He became a human being and suffered for us. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 22. When are you going to die? I have no idea. Well, God knows exactly the moment of your death. And it could be tonight, could be tomorrow. I'm not using scare tactics. This is just straight. Yes, uh, yes, you are. I'm not using <laughs> scare tactics. That's you might die tonight. You might die. Do you want to die? I don't want you to die. Believe in Jesus. And the, I can't believe I'm only noticing this now. He, This is Pascal's wager. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind what of if some up? other god is the real one? Yeah. Then what? I said, Bingo's the real god. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> don't I don't accept. Of, of course, I'm going to go with the flying spaghetti monster, but whatever. Yeah. Bingo's the 150,000 people every 24 hours die. And they're all making plans for next week, no doubt. So please think about this. Do you have a Bible at home? No. I'm not talking about a religion that says you've got to strive to get to heaven. I'm telling you, the Bible says heaven is a free gift of God. You so cannot earn everlasting life. Doesn't matter how religious you are, Bible, how good you are, God commended his love to us. No. To heaven is if you don't believe in Jesus. You could be a serial rapist, murderer, stalker. You could be one of the most fucked up individuals in the universe. But as long as you apologize to it, to Jesus, you have heaven. Doesn't that just make you feel warm and fuzzy inside? I know it does for me. What kind of, what kind of loving God would devise such a system that only people who believe in him would go to heaven? I mean, doesn't that seem like a tad immoral? Shouldn't there be, you know, an instead of you know having the the criteria instead of having the only criteria to gain access to ever to eternal life be ex blind acceptance in you know something that has no evidence to back it up why couldn't it be you know something that is i don't know more moral like be a moral person be a good person try to do the right thing why does Why there have to be a heaven or hell in the first place? The whole idea of sorting souls is, is just stupid. What, what is the benefit of that system? Jeebus. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of, I actually had a cat called Jeebus once. <laughs> okay, we're getting sidetracked again. Let's carry on. While we yet sinners, Christ died for us, and then he rose from the dead and defeated death. And this is how the Bible puts it. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man boast. So eternal life is a free gift of God, and it comes because of God's mercy, not because of anything we do. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Do you have a Bible at home? Yep, yes. I've been reading the Bible every day for more than 40 years. There's no mistakes in it, Mike. <laughs> There's no uh... mistakes in it. Can I just point out, there's a website, and even if you just Google it, you'll probably find this website. It goes through the Bible, finding contradictions, mistakes, and errors. This website has been going for roughly three years. They have found thousands of errors, and it's still going. Was that the Skeptics Annotated Bible, by yeah. any chance? I think it might be, or yeah, it's it one very similar to oh, it. Well. Do you know I don't something? think it's I don't think it's thousands, but it's it's hundreds anyway. Yeah. It's uh, but um, yeah, it's no, it's just speaking about fun. skeptics annotated Bible that leads into uh, in November we're going to be interviewing the author of that book. So oh. look forward to that. That's just a little break from the break comfort, but sadly we have to go back. Yeah. Any mistakes that we think are our mistakes. And you can trust God's word. I mean, think of how you trust professors and science books that tell you you're a, you're a primate. You trust and believe that. So how much more should you trust to God? Well, those professors lie? exist. Let me show you how fallible we are. Spell the word shop. 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 S H O P. What do you do when you come to a green light? Stop. Green light. Oh. <laughs> so we're all fallible. We make mistakes. Imagine if you. Yeah. <laughs> 
don't know what he's doing. Well done. What? You managed to use a phonological loop argument in order to confuse someone into saying shop or stop when they're supposed to go. Well done. You managed to find one of the many little problems in the human brain. I'm so proud of you, you fucking twat. I think I think this I think this video is one big giant mistake, though. Yeah. Got a point. It, my only thought at this point in terms of Ray is why couldn't he have been aborted? <laughs> yeah. You're making a mistake when you say this whole of creation came together because some explosion of nothing that produced everything, seasons. The birds, the uh, trees, the flowers, the sun, the moon, the stars, and the marvels of the human body. So are you going to think about this? Oh, yeah, no, I, I think about this quite a lot, believe me. My brother, like I said, he's a hardcore Christian. He's going to Yale Divinity School right now, so he talks to me about this all the time. And so you've got to think seriously about this. Life is full of decisions. Right, so right. Up. We do think seriously about it. That's why we're atheists. Uh, do we even need to talk about the explosion from nothing? I don't think so. No. Right. Don't have so much of a blind down. faith in what science tells you and has left you without any knowledge of what was in the beginning anyway. You haven't I got have a clue no where you faith come from. in what science don't... tells me. I look at the evidence. Yeah. And he's going with a you don't know, so... Yeah, okay. You don't know, you know what you're doing here, Arthur. You don't know what happens after, mm, after you die. Like Is he gonna go uh, sigh? Without... God's existence. Because in that case, I'm yes. gonna drink. And could you be wrong about God's existence? No. Well, then, then I think you're rather close-minded. Well, if I said to you, um, could you be wrong about your wife's existence, you'd say, no, I know her. You'd say, don't be ridiculous, I know her and love her. And I know the Lord and I love the Lord and transformed my life 41 years ago, instantly overnight, forgave my sins and gave me new desires when I had no desires or thoughts of God for the whole 22 years before I was a Christian. Mike, thanks for talking to me, I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, no problem, thank you. One more thing. I'm pretty sure you've always been a Christian. Spell the word shop. Shop? Like S-H-O-P? S-H-O-P? What do you do when you come to a green light? You stop. Green light. Hmm? Green light. Oh. Ahaha. <laughs> very good. Here you go. Petey, you've been a good sport. Thank you very much for talking to me. Okay. I generally don't engage creationists because it's not good for my blood pressure. <laughs> yeah. Or your alcohol levels. Holy <laughs> <laughs> crap. I think about it a lot, years. actually. I, I, I think about I think about death and how fragile life is, and how just in a second, I, it, it could all be over and there'd be nothing. You know, the the problem with those who are unable to see evolution, I think, is they don't have imaginations. Anatomical clues to human evolution from fish. Human beings are still fish. Human ears evolved. <laughs> from ancient fish gills. We came out of the ground as a mammal. Heavier dinosaur arms led evolution to birds. Do you think we're related to pigs? Do you think we've got a common ancestor in pigs? Yes. Proof that fearsome T-Rex evolved into a chicken. Do you think you're a primate? Yes, I am. What? Are you a talking primate? Uh, I am. Are you a cousin of bananas? Uh, why, yes. Why, yeah, When no. whales walked the land. I'm accepting that they did their science correctly. I generally trust the scientific community. I'm going to trust what those experts did. Those experts uh, came up with. Darwinian evolution rests on faith. And once again, according to Richard oh. Dawkins, faith oh, is the great compound, the great excuse to evade the need to think and evaluate evidence. Darwinian evolution requires great faith. The knowledge of oh. God, however, is clearly seen by all mankind. But since no, the creation no. of the world, no. its visible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal no. power and God here, so that now without Bible, excuse. Yes. Because Why although they I knew God, it? they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. What does God need with God. a spaceship? <laughs> Thank well, you for taking the time to watch Evolution versus God. If you'd like to get more information about our ministry, please visit livingwaters.com. Ray yeah, Cooper has don't. written a number of books oh, on atheism and fuck. I actually came back <laughs> on the end. <laughs> right, so we're just going to wrap up the Evolution end. to help further your study on this incredibly important subject. At livingwaters.com, you can also learn about our online school of biblical evangelism, our international television program, The Way of the Master, our daily webcast, The Comfort Zone, 
and Roots, a DVD series with Ray, Kirk Cameron, and the Duggar family. We're extremely humbled to see how God has used our previous productions to impact people around the oh, globe. We're so we have to spread the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ. We want to get free DVD copies of Evolution vs. God into the hands of university students across the world. Because they really do need beer mats, don't they? Yeah. That's to discover how you can help make this happen, please check Christies out livingwaters.com. Thank you so much for partnering so. with us to inspire and equip Christians in fulfilling the Great Commission. How many of those ended up in the bin beside them? Okay, guys. The, the end. Were used to wipe the students' asses. <laughs> We have reached the end. Uh, I'll quickly go around everyone for their thoughts, Kitch. <laughs> oh, God. That was so awful. That it actually it's one of the few ponages that turned out to be worse than that, what I was thinking. Yeah. Because it, was, it actually got agree. disgusting at one point, what he was doing. So, Marty, your thoughts there? Yeah, it, it was. it was just awful and offensive in every, I think. every conceivable way it, 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 it wasn't even anything fun to work with yeah it just sucked <laughs> pumpkin um the only good thing i'd like to take out of that is this was my well the only good thing should i say is this is the first um life bonage i've done and that was interesting for me I did manage to organize my thoughts long enough to do a decent little rant on the spark of life. And the downsides of that were I had to listen to Ray Comfort a lot. <laughs> um, I had to listen to the most drawn out lead up to the Godwin's Law. And then, better yet, I had to listen to that fucking scumbags say that all atheist, the atheist poster boy is suicidal, therefore atheism, therefore suicide, therefore bad. And to that, the only thing I can say is, on the off chance that Ray does see this, and he and I haven't met, stay the fuck away from me if you want to keep <laughs> breathing. Lundy, your thoughts? So in conclusion, Ray either doesn't understand evolution or refuses to um, portray it in a manner that is actually accurate to what the scientific community is talking about whenever they talk about evolution. He doesn't understand how metaethics works. His philosophy is at the very least first grade. Uh, actually, I'd say the most. Um, he doesn't understand what he's talking about when it comes to Hitler. He doesn't understand what he's talking about when it comes to his own theology. He doesn't understand just about anything, and he would prefer to just interview random people off the streets and ask them for things that they would have to have access to papers to, in order to answer. Also, ask them questions that are nonsensical within the context of what he's talking about. Also, he likes to question a couple people who are actually skilled in a science, but usually not in actually what they're trained for, and usually he'll just edit what they say anyway. So, Ray Comfort uh, is a douche. Thank yeah. you, Eddie. That's good. So that's the end of that one. Um, I think we'll tell everyone what we've got coming up. Um, we're back, and Pumpkin, I can hear you typing really loudly. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> right, that's a problem. Um, yeah. Coming up next, same time next week, we're interviewing Mr. Andrew Dart, who wrote a book called Building Your Skeptical Toolkit. It's a nice little introductory book into science and philosoph philosophical thinking. Uh, looking forward mm. to that. And the week after that, Londy, you can tell us about the guest after that. It's someone you're very interested in speaking to. Londy? We can't hear you, Londy. Sorry about that. I was <laughs> muted there for a second. Would that be our Robert Johnson? Yes, it will be. Robert Johnson is a, per is a um, very skilled writer so far that I've seen. I'm currently in the process of reading his book, Rational Morality, which is sort of a accompanying book to Sam Harris's Moral Landscape. Uh, Robert Johnson seems to be of the uh, uh, same opinion that I am, that Sam Harris has started a very good starting point, at the very least, when it comes to uh, coming up with uh, uh, an objective basis to morality outside of religion, uh, generally referring to science and the way we evaluate um, the world around us in a natural way. 
Uh, a decent portion of the book has to do with um, devaluing religious morality, and then another portion of the book has to do with uh, talking about what he's actually proposing. And personally, uh, I've, I'm only a couple chapters in, but he's a very skilled writer, and I'm very interested in interviewing him. Okay, and that is the 19th of October, that one, same time. And after that, we're, uh, please everyone remember, we're going to be on a Friday for the show after that, and we're interviewing UFO debunker Robert Schaefer. I don't know, is the name familiar with anyone here? Robert Schaefer. No. Well, he's quite a well-known debunker of UFOs and general pseudoscience, but UFOs is his speciality, and that That'll brings... Be that brings us up to the 2nd of November, and we've got someone returning by the name of Matt Dillahunty. Does anyone know who this fellow is? I have no, no idea who you're talking about. No. Who, talking? who is this nobody? Yes. Who's, the, who's this Brad Dillahunty? <laughs> yes. Wait, is, he any, is he related to, um, wasn't he involved from accounting? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, you swear, have... I, I think I might know the two of them if I've seen them out. Yep. Is, he, is he the guy who organizes the atheist eat babies parties? Yep. Is, I, I, I love those parties. I, I, yeah, I, there's so the much fun. Yeah. Like rooms are just awesome. Right. <laughs> but anyway, um, everyone knows who Matt Dillahunty is. We're very, very happy to have him back, especially oh, yeah. Lundy, because something. I, came... I missed out my first chance, so yeah. <laughs> I, I have to make sure that that day I've got nothing at all going on. Yep. You're just going to lock yourself in the house in the week leading up to that to make sure. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm just going to tell both of my jobs, no, I'm sorry, but i got something more important yeah. to do. <laughs> so that's going to be a little event we've called Matt Dillahunty to the matinee nor whatever kind of movie pun you want to stick in there. I think Matt Hard was the other one, wasn't it? Matt Hard. Matt, uh, Matt Dillahunty to Matt Harder. Ah, Return right. to Dillahunty. Yep. <laughs> Dillahunty strikes back. You're free to enjoy that. Then uh, the last, the next guest we got booked up, and this is us booked up until the 9th of November. Uh, it's another very good one. We spoke about it earlier. Mr. Steve Wells, Lund uh, Lundy, have you heard that name before? Steve Wells. That actually does sound familiar. Yeah, um, he is the author of the Skeptics Annotated Bible. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Which has yes. just come out in paperback. So there you go. We've got loads of good guests coming up, and they've all got really good books out. Um, the links will be up on the website, which everyone, I think everyone's been watching this through the website, which is really great tonight, and it's worked out very well, this. And, and if you haven't been watching through the website, get the fuck off on and go on the website, you son of a bitch. Yeah, because the main thing is the chat room has been very troll-free for such a high, highly viewed show tonight, which has been great. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, great with the IRC chat because we can IP ban people. <laughs> yes, we know where you live now. <laughs> No so more like the NSA. Oh, yeah, free peer. So thank you, We're everyone. Like the for... NSA, except several of us are drunk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, that so just exactly means just And the NSA. rest of us are about to get drunk, I think. So, <laughs> so um, thank you, thank you, everyone, for turning out tonight. It's been well. It, I think it's been enjoyable for you. For us, it's been a bit different on this side. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. We'll see you next week at the same time and. Oh, just one thing. If anyone knows how to set up a server on Unreal Tournament, please uh, send me a private message because I really want to know how to do that because that's going to be, we want that to be our post show hangouts in the future. So anyone who knows anything about Unreal Tournament's server setups, please get in touch with us. So thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you all next week. Good night. See ya. See ya. Good night, everybody.